welcome back to another week of what's for dinner this week i have some super easy and delicious meals to share with you they're all very budget friendly and i think they are meals that your whole family is going to love so if that is something that you're interested in and make sure you stay tuned until the very end to see all of these recipes and if you're new here consider hitting that little red subscribe button i would absolutely love to have you i do tons of cooking videos on my channel i post a what's for dinner every single Sunday. I do grocery hauls, meal prep, crock pot meals, just tons of food related content. So definitely make sure you're subscribed if that interests you. Give this video a thumbs up and let's go ahead and get into the meals for the week. So for the first recipe this week, I'm making a chicken fettuccine alfredo. I actually saw this recipe over on my friend Julia's channel. She did it just a little bit different, but I decided to pan fry my chicken. I think she baked it in her video. That's what the recipe called for, but I just decided I wanted to pan fry it. I thought it would be a little bit quicker, and I definitely think it was. So here I have two chicken breasts. I'm just cutting them into strips, and then I'm just going to be pan frying them with some seasonings. And then I'm just seasoning these up with quite a bit of garlic powder and then I also did some salt and pepper. And then you don't see me add it here but I did go ahead and add on a little bit of Italian seasoning while the chicken was actually cooking in the pan. When I am pan frying chicken, I will usually do it over medium heat. And most of the time, I like to do a combination of olive oil and butter. Then you get the flavor of the butter, but it's not quite as much of the butter. At least olive oil is a little bit healthier. So I would say I did probably like a couple of tablespoons of each. Let that heat up, and then here I'm just adding in the chicken. I would say I cook these for probably like, maybe like four or five minutes on each side, just until the chicken is all the way cooked through. So you can really cook your chicken however you want. You could definitely bake it. You could do it in the Instant Pot and do shredded chicken if you want and then mix it into your sauce that way. You could use grilled chicken, breaded chicken. Go ahead and do whatever your family prefers. But I don't know, lately I've been really loving just pan frying the chicken. So that's what I decided to do. It was a little bit quicker than baking it and it was just nice and simple and easy. So when it's all done cooking, I am just pulling that right out of the pan and onto the plate. And then I'm gonna be using this pan for the sauce. Into that same skillet, there's a little bit of the olive oil and butter left over from the chicken, which is totally fine. I'm just adding in about two more tablespoons of butter and letting that melt down. Once that's completely melted, I'm adding in some garlic. I just used the stuff in the jar. I added in probably like a good tablespoon of that. And then I'm just letting that heat up probably for around a minute or so, just until that garlic is nice and fragrant. And then I'm adding in one tablespoon of just regular all-purpose flour. I'm just whisking that in until it is really well combined. You definitely want to make sure that everything is combined here. You can tell that I have some bits of chicken in there. So mine isn't perfectly white like it would normally be, but that's totally fine. It honestly added a little bit more flavor that way. And then I'm adding in the heavy cream. So this recipe called for two cups of heavy whipping cream. And I'm just gradually adding that in until everything is nice and mixed together. Thank you. 
So you're gonna let all of this sauce heat up. You don't really want it to come to a boil just until it starts coming to a simmer and everything is thickening up. And then you're gonna be adding in your half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, which I have right there. You're also going to need a quarter cup of sour cream. And then I also added in half a cup of the jarred type of Parmesan cheese. I did season this to taste with a little bit of salt and pepper and then you're just going to stir all of this together and you're just going to heat it over low heat until all of that cheese is melted in. You don't want to have this boiling or anything like that. You don't want your cream to curdle but you do want to have it all nice and heated together so that cheese gets nice and melty. Once my sauce was completely heated through, I'm just adding in that chicken to let that kind of reheat back up and make sure everything is nice and combined and that that chicken gets coated in the sauce. And then that's it for this sauce. Super simple, you're just gonna serve it with some noodles. This was a super delicious meal. We definitely love this recipe, so thank you, Julia, for recommending this one. The next night this week, we actually made some chicken burrito bowls, and this might have been my favorite for the whole entire week. It was just really simple to put together, fairly clean recipe, and it just was super flavorful and delicious. And I have to say, my kids ate them extremely well too, which is always a bonus, and there was also tons of leftovers. So really great budget-friendly meal, and you can really tweak this to what your family likes. But I am just starting off with, again, two chicken breasts. You guys know we really like chicken in this house, but this this time I'm cutting them up into small pieces. I didn't do the strips this time. I just did small chunks and then I'm going to be pan frying them again. So this time I did just do plain butter because that's all that I had on hand. So I'm heating that up and then I'm just adding my chicken right into my pan with lots of good seasoning. So I definitely wanted to make sure that this chicken had a ton of flavor, so I'm adding in tons of onion powder, garlic powder, I did salt and pepper, and then I also added in some paprika, as well as some Tony seasoning. If you don't like any spice, I would say just omit the Tony's, but honestly, this was not too spicy. My kids ate it just fine, but just be careful if you're going to be using Tony's because it can get a little bit spicy. And then I'm just cooking that chicken all the way through, and then you're ready to assemble your burrito bowl so I just have some brown rice there and then for my toppings I did black beans we did some corn both of those are just from the can and then I also did some lettuce as well as some rotel tomatoes fresh would have been better but we just didn't have any on hand and then I also added in some avocado and that is kind of the base for our toppings here I did top it with a little bit of cheese some salsa and some sour cream but these were super, super delicious and you definitely will love this recipe. You could definitely even make this without the chicken if you want, but that chicken on there was just super, super delicious and we loved this dinner. For the next night, I made some loaded mashed potatoes to go with broth, which was super quick and easy. I have been all about easy meals lately because it has just been very, very busy and chaotic around here. So this was a great meal to just kind of throw in the crock pot and not really have to worry about all day. So I'm just starting off with some red potatoes. For this recipe, I would say either use golden Yukon potatoes, use either like baby reds, or you can use these regular red potatoes, which is what I'm using. And I feel like you can get away with not peeling them because these thins are super, super thin. But I'm just cutting them into probably about one inch cubes, and then I'm throwing them right into my crock pot, which was oiled. I do like to add some salt into my potatoes while they're cooking and then I'm just going to be filling this up pretty much all the way to the top with just regular water. This is just going to help all of the potatoes get nice and cooked just like they would if you were boiling them in a pot. And then I cook them on high for probably like four or five hours. It's just going to depend on your crock pot. I just cook them until they are completely fork tender. They're basically falling apart and they're ready to actually be mashed. And then I'm just quickly draining them off and then we're going to be ready to make some really delicious mashed potatoes. 
For these mashed potatoes, go ahead and just add them right back into your crock pot. I will say if you do them in a bigger crock pot, it will be much easier. This was too many potatoes in this crock pot, so it made it really hard to mash them without letting them fall out. But I just take my plain old potato masher and mash them up. You can also use a hand mixer if you prefer. It depends on if you want your potatoes like super, super smooth or if you like them a little bit chunky. I was going to leave them a little bit chunky on this night, so I just used the plain handheld masher so now it's time to add in all of the good stuff so I'm adding in some butter I would say I added in like right around three tablespoons give or take and then I'm adding in probably about half a cup of sour cream you do want to add in quite a bit of sour cream for this one because they are supposed to be loaded mashed potatoes I may have even added a little bit more sour cream than half a cup but just eyeball it, see what you think as far as taste. And then I did go ahead and add in salt, pepper, as well as quite a bit of garlic powder. And you do also want to add in some cheese. This time I used cheddar cheese, but I've used a ton of different cheeses for this recipe and it works out just fine. And then the secret ingredient here is you've gotta add some bacon. I did cheat this time and I just used like the real bacon pieces from the store to make it easier. But you can definitely cook up some bacon and add it that way. And then of course you're just going to add some milk get all of this mixed together this is something you just kind of have to make to taste you may want to add a little bit more salt and pepper garlic you may want more cheese and more sour cream in yours it just is totally gonna be personal preference on this one but it really is super easy and delicious I love this for a good side On this night, I did add in some more salt as well as some more garlic powder and pepper. I just felt like it needed a little bit more. So I'm just doing this until it completely suits our taste. Remember that you're not gonna be adding gravy or anything to these, so you want to make sure that they're really, really nice and flavorful. This is a really great dish to bring places because you can just get it ready to go in your crock pot and then bring it with, and it's all ready to go. So we just served this with some broth and then some cucumbers because it was super nice and easy. For this next night, I made an avocado and chicken pasta salad. I'm just starting off with getting my noodles ready. So I'm using one box of garden rotini, and I'm just getting that dumped into my pot of boiling water. I do always like to salt my pasta water. I just feel like it adds tons more flavor to the noodles, and I'm just getting those cooked up until they are al dente. So this is a super simple and easy pasta salad to put together. It's perfect for summer because it's filled with all kinds of veggies. So I'm just starting off with my tomatoes here. I used grape tomatoes and I just cut them in half. But I would say you're gonna want like around a cup to a cup and a half of bite-sized tomatoes. And then for the onion, I'm using a purple onion. I'm sure you could get away with using either a yellow or a white onion as well. But I would say I used about a third of this large purple onion and I'm just cutting it into pretty small pieces. I did not want large chunks in there, so I definitely made sure that it was cut up really well. So this is something a little bit different that I don't typically add into pasta salad, but this recipe called for avocados. So I did use two of them. They were perfectly ripe. They turned out super great. I love avocado, so I was super happy to see it in this recipe. It's definitely what made me actually wanna make it. And what else is better than when you actually cut open your avocado and they're actually a really good one that doesn't have a lot of spots. I feel like I'm the worst at picking out avocados and mine always have the little brown spots in them. If you guys have any tips on picking avocados, let me know down in the comments because I feel like I'm just not the best at it. I don't know if there's any secret tricks that I don't know about, but I'm just getting these cut up. I didn't cut them into super small pieces. I just kind of chunked them up and getting those set aside in a bowl. Since avocado browns so quickly, I did decide to drizzle it with a little bit of lemon juice to just help preserve it a little bit longer without it turning colors because it was gonna be a couple hours before we ate the salad and I didn't want those avocados to turn brown. So I'm gonna be very honest with this dressing recipe. 
I'm gonna have this recipe linked down below for you guys, but I have to be honest, I did not like it at all. It was super strong vinegar taste. It was all vinegar to me. So I would not recommend this dressing recipe. I'm not even gonna tell you how exactly I made it, but I will have the recipe linked down below. But I'm gonna tell you what I would do for a dressing if it was me. I would do something like a ranch on here or a creamy Caesar dressing would be really, really delicious or even like a zesty Italian dressing would be really good on here. But to me, the recipe that I followed, it was just way, way too much vinegar. It completely ruined this pasta salad for me. But the combination of the noodles, the chicken, and all of the veggies, the onion, tomatoes, and the avocado, all of that was great. But this dressing was just way too overpowering and way too much vinegar. If you do decide to try out this dressing recipe that I have linked below, I would definitely say cut out a lot of the vinegar and do it to taste because I'm pretty sure you're going to find that it's overpowering as well. But you can try it and see what you think. But I definitely would say that the combination of the chicken and the avocado and the tomatoes, that was delicious. It was just the dressing that we were not a fan of at all. So this is what the pasta salad looks like with the dressing in the recipe. But like I said, it just was way too strong. So I did try and save the dressing and I added in like some ranch and I added in some cheese and it helped, but it was still just so, so much vinegar. So if I were to make this again, and I will probably make this combination of veggies, but next time I will skip the vinegar and I will just go with like an Italian or ranch or some other type of dressing on there. All right, guys, that is going to wrap up this week of what's for dinner. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that little subscribe button. I would love to have you. I do tons of cooking videos on my channel. I do post a what's for dinner every single Sunday. So definitely make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those. But that is going to be it for today's video. I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. As Bye. A young girl, it feels we played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines. So offshore, playful and free, without a care.